There's a story to be told. It's not so long, tales for young and old. Won't you come along? Tee diddly. Die. Die. Oh, oh, ho, 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 dear o' oh me, ha, 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 oh, you caught old Orn napping again. Oh, I had a really good swim this morning, you know. I went over to Brough to see some of my relations. Me and me cousins, the few that are left, likes to take turns getting together at each other's dens. Do you know, he has a grand den, yeah, and he lives right off of the river Morning Star, mm-hmm, which runs just outside the village. To be sure, it's a lovely river. But I can't help but love me kamog all the same and the more. <laughs> Do you ever have times where you get together with members of your family? Do you know, like aunties and uncles, you know? Or maybe your cousins and such. You do? Oh, well that's so good to hear. It's wonderful to spend time with family, you know. There's always great stories to share and fun to be had. When I was a much, much younger, Pup, we would have large family gatherings, you know. There were piles of us everywhere in the back. In back in the day, you know, yeah. The banks of the river would be teeming with us, young pups, sliding in the mud and splashing something fierce. <laughs> we were quite the sight. However, there was a time when all the families didn't get together. Have I ever told you of the family fiasco? of 1959? No? Well, find a comfy spot on the rock, if you can, <laughs> and let old Oren tell you the tale. Back in 1959, I was a young pup, full of energy and no shortage of mischief. I wasn't a bad otter, for I was taught well enough by my mum and dad about manners, you know, showing respect. And honouring God with me choices. My mischief was all about playing tricks on folk. I remember one time I switched the sugar in the tea for salt. <laughs> so when me mum went to make a cup of tea, she put two spoons of salt in her tea, thinking that it was sugar. Oh, the look on her face after her first sip. Oh, me grand was visiting that day, and she got a stitch in her side from laughing so hard. <laughs> so, one day, again, back in 1959, I was a visiting one of my cousin's dens who lived a fair swim down the river. I didn't visit this cousin much, as his parents, which was my dad's sister, liked a quiet den. Too much noise or shenanigans, and they'd get grumpy and such. My cousins and I, my cousin and I, we, we, we swam down, uh, a bit down the river, so that we wouldn't be heard splashing and uh, shouting about, you know. After a while, we sort of got bored. Do you ever get bored? Like, you run out of things to do. Yeah? Sometimes? Well, we were stone bored and looking for things to do. Due to my natural mischievous tendencies, <laughs> I came up with a grand idea that I thought would be, would bring plenty of, of excitement, you know. I convinced me cousin to pretend he was wounded, like he had an accident of sorts. I found a patch of red berries and I crushed up a bunch and spread them on his face and head. Oh, he looked a sight, I tell you. In fairness, he wasn't so sure about it all. And I should have heeded his warnings about his parents not being too keen on being tricked. I says we were only having a little fun, that we wouldn't let the ruse go on too long. So off we swam towards the den, and my cousin was acting out his part at being injured with great gusto. I started hollering for help, and out came not only my aunt, but also a whole host of other women as well. There must have been 10 to 15 ladies, all doted up in their finest. 
they were having a fancy tea party. We didn't know that, I assure you. When me cousin's mum saw the sight of her son's head and face, she fainted on the spot. Do to her fainting, a whole bunch of the other ladies started fainting. It was like a domino effect. Suddenly, right before me eyes, there were ladies and their finest all lying in the muck, out cold. Oh, me cousin started to wail as he was upset about his mum. He came running over to her smearing red berry juice all over her muddy blouse. When his mum came to, she was shocked to learn it was all a joke. She did not laugh, not at all. I was told to swim home immediately and that my mum would be getting a call right away. Due to that episode, my daddy's sister wanted nothing to do with us for quite a while. I was a forbidden to see me cousin as well. They didn't join us in the family gatherings either. There was no peace in our family for years. I felt awful. I apologized and wrote letters. Me mum and dad reached out many times. No success. I asked me dad if we would ever see his sister's family ever again. He told me that we would pray for peace between our families and trust that God would help them to come around and be a part of our family functions again. Daddy told me that living peaceably with others was important. In fact, God said in the Bible, in Romans 12, 18, if it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. This means you do your best and ask God to help you to treat others with love and respect, even when you don't always agree. There's no need for fighting or saying hurtful things to others when you don't agree with something, do you know? Let me encourage you, my friends, to do your best to live at peace with your family and, and your family members, you know. We are, what are ways that you can live at peace with them? What's that? Be a good listener. When others are sharing ideas, that's good. But be sure to ask for forgiveness if you're offended someone with your words or actions, okay? Yeah. Oh dear. Oh, I didn't finish my story of the family fiasco 59, did I? <laughs> Long story short, my daddy finally got in to see his sister, and they came to an understanding, and we all got together again the following summer. Happy days! Well, oh, I best be off. Mrs. Orrin is expecting me for tea, you know. I think I'll just slip into the water here and swim off. Blessings, and we'll be talking again soon. Bye-bye! <laughs> Woo! There's a story to be told, it's not so long, tales for young and old, won't you come along?